I'm a big fan of rock and roll, um, have been for, for a long time. Um, so the prospect of playing a rock and roll star was, you know, something I'd love to do. Um, but then when I actually read the script as well, I saw there was there was a lot more to the story um, than, than just that. There's a lot more to it than, like the themes we've talked about before, about identity and and family and and seeing the the, the pitfalls of success as well. Um, and I think it's just very interesting for an audience to see um, because we don't, we, we hear various things through the media, but we don't always see the inner workings of what goes on um, when becoming that successful. Freddie sees Roger and Brian playing uh, in Smile and he's, he's drawn by their, the fact they've both got great backing vocals. Um, they're both very talented musicians and he kind of sees that talent and thinks about the potential of what they could create together um, and approaches them essentially when he finds out that Tim has left the band to say, I'm a singer, I can be your new, new lead singer. There's a lot of you know, great, technically great singers, but I think Freddie sings with such passion and is completely in the moment when he sings that I think he really carries the audience with him. And um, I think that's what, what made him so appealing. And I mean, there's, there's certain, there's some, I could go through particular songs and particular live performances where there's, there's certain notes that he hits and the way that he hits them, which just kind of, they kind of almost pierce your soul in a way, you know, and I think that's, that's, that's what made him so special. And then on top of all of that, he's also a brilliant songwriter and responsible for writing Bohemian Rhapsody and these, these classics that will be remembered for as long as, as long as we can think of. What makes Bohemian Rhapsody so unique is that no one, no one would ever have thought that that song would be a hit. You know, there's, there's so many different genres in there. There's, it's, I mean, this, this EMI, the label, wanted to split the song uh, into, into different songs because they thought it was, you know, there's just too much going on, there's too many genres, it's too long. And I think Freddie was like, no, this is my, this is my vision. I'm going to make this song. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. But it's going to be ours and it's going to be entirely ours. And then it's just by some stroke of genius, the entire nation went crazy for it. It was great working with him, and he took it very seriously. He was, um, he stayed in his uh, his northern accent, his British northern accent, the entire time on and off set, and uh, took it home to his to his partner as well, I think. And um, he was brilliant. It's just the, he's just the kind of guy who's just can't can't not be funny, you know. It was like he was just cracking us up all day long. All day long, and it felt like he wasn't even trying to, you know. He just he kept doing all these things. He kept, uh, before every take, he'd always be like slapping his wrists, going, it's just for funsies, and stuff like this, which I know, like, I do it, doesn't sound funny. When he does it, it's hilarious. It's just absolutely hilarious. I was basically drumming, you know, 10 hours a day, uh, intensively working with, a, with an instructor, uh, Brett Morgan is his name, very good drummer, uh, very good teacher. and. Um, it was really a crash course in drumming. And obviously, I'm to this day, I'm obviously not as good a drummer as Roger Taylor and never would be able to in that, in that time frame. Maybe not even in 50 years. Who knows? He's very, obviously a very talented drummer. That's why he, he is where he is. But, um, but at least to, to do the best I could to convey his, his style, his showmanship. There's a, like, I was trying to focus more on how he, how he drums rather than just being good at playing the drums, you know? I've played people who are who have been and gone, um, but I've never played someone um, someone who is living today. And it, it, I found it quite daunting. And I think it took me a while to get to get to grips with the fact that my job is not to be them. My job is not to impersonate them. It's not to be exactly like them because there's there's certain things that I can't change to make myself like him. We're physically different. We're you know. Vocally, we're quite different as well. My job is my job is to is to give an essence of Roger and the strongest essence I can, uh, whilst also being true to the text and and serving the purposes of this film. Um, so it took me a while to get to grips with that, but once I had, I felt a lot more comfortable with that. 
the Queen often get lumped in the in the genre of, I suppose, rock and roll, maybe. Um, but there's so there's so much more than that. You know, there's. It, I think what made them so unique is in in a lot of their songs they'll have they'll have some heavy rock um, material and then also then go into a kind of slightly more musical theatre or slight or opera or just really melodic and and they really kind of played with those existing genres and and bended them and and to create a whole new genre which I couldn't even give you a word for Queen yeah. Selfishly, I think what I would like people to walk away from this film uh, thinking is, hey, maybe we should um, maybe we should get back into rock and roll. Maybe we should have some more rock and roll fans. That's